you're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. Today we visit Red Hawk Golf and Resort. This is Ron Gribble, Superintendent. So excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming out, Mitch. Uh, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to play some golf. Which course would you like to start on? Which course? You have more than one. We have two golf courses out here. How about we start with the Hills course? Let's go have some fun. Let's do it. Taking views. It is, Mitch. It really is. Uh, uh, beautiful morning today. Uh, we're up here on our Hills Golf Course, which was built in in 2000, designed by Hill Irwin. Uh, it was built four years after the original golf course, the Lakes Course, which we'll, we saw earlier. Uh, it is spectacular. We're we're perched here, about 5,000 feet elevation, overlooking the Spanish Springs Valley. We're actually at the highest point of the Hills Golf Course. We're on our 700-yard par five, uh, which which you're going to hit a few shots here. <laughs> Did I hear you correctly? 700 yards. 700 yards. Uh, one of the longest holes in in the world, if if not uh, uh, Nevada, obviously. But uh, it is downhill, so your drive will uh, will get a little extra roll. Get a few extra feet at least it on will. the downhill and slopes. The and the second shot is is way downhill, so it'll help you a lot. So it plays as a long par five. Uh, for me and you, maybe a par six. Or a par 10 for me. <laughs> yeah, for, or a par 10, yes. 700 yards later, here we are. Here we are, and I think it only took us three shots to get here. Uh, Mitch has a birdie putt right here. He's about 25 feet away. Uh, why don't you give it a roll? Go ahead and putt it, and I'll, uh, I'll explain to you about our greens and, and uh, how we maintain them up here. Well, I'm already aware of the fact that this is the smoothest green I've ever stood on. We, we cut them at lower than eighth of an inch. Uh, we have a mix of poanya and bent grass. We mow them every day roll them most days and that's not a bad birdie putt there let's see how i do wasn't that long ago this was just open space 21 years ago mitch it was open space it was the Wingfield Ranch, uh, built by George Wingfield. The uh, wetlands were, were created by the uh, ore ditch terminus, which ran from the Truckee River, 37 miles out here. And David Loeb, the developer here, saw an opportunity to build a beautiful community. And now the wetlands are integrated into this uh, wonderful community. And uh, it's something else, 5,000 homes now with probably more on the way. One of the first truly master plan communities in Sparks at least, it if was. not Northern Nevada. It was the, the, the first in Sparks and, and in Northern Nevada, the first of this magnitude. Uh, 5,000 homes, 2,000 original acres, uh, enormous project for the community and, and it's beautiful. I was fascinated to learn that this course is still owned by the original developers. It is, Mitch, and, and that's a, a unique situation in, in all of golf, in all of the United States. What happened is in the early, early 90s to early 2000s, thousands of golf courses were built as part of developments to sell real estate. And real estate was sold, golf courses were left in disrepair, 
developers lost interest, golf course is closed. This golf course is very unique that the developers still own and manage both golf courses. And it's, it's been a great, uh, uh, great marriage, it really has, for the community and for the city of Sparks. One thing that comes out of that is the best groomed course in Nevada. It's, it's, it, we pride ourselves in, in having the smoothest greens, the best tee boxes, the best fairways. You have two courses and the public can play both. I think that's interesting. It is, and it's unique to this area. We have a private membership and we cater to the public. The private club members play the Hills course one day. The next day, they play the Lakes course. The public does the opposite, plays the Hills course one day, the Lakes course the next day. So I can come here today, play one, come back tomorrow, play the other, and be able to experience both courses. Correct. Speaking of golf memberships, since we're owned by the developer, we are non-equity, meaning when you join Red Hawk, you're not buying a piece of the golf course, which also makes our initiation fees very reasonable and our monthly dues very affordable. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm Good. Ken, I'm the golf professional here. Nice to meet you. I could have used your services uh, before I played the Hills course, but I could definitely use a lesson. Well, we can take care of that, but first I think we should get you into something that's a little more comfortable. That might help your game right off the bat. I like it. This is a gorgeous shirt. Let's do it. All right. And that's a middle line. Six iron you have there. You're going to play that back more towards the middle of your stance, so your feet are going to go that way. Now, this shoulder should be just a little bit lower than that shoulder. We should have a straight line between here and the club. Take it all the way up. Keep your iron there. Okay. Way up here. Straighten that elbow out. Very good. That was really helpful. Now I know the elements necessary to have a proper swing. Thank you for that. You're welcome. It's important to have the right things that you're working on so that you're practicing the right way. So you can go on and practice yourself. How about some putting tips? I would love some. All right. Ken, thank you so much for those pointers. Mitch, you're really welcome. You're welcome. You're ready for the Lakes course now. I'm ready. If you've ever watched golf on television, they talk about this tool every tournament, every weekend. This is a stint meter, and it measures green speed and trueness. And what we do here at Red Hawk daily is we, we take a sample of one green on the Lakes course and one on the Hills course. We roll the ball off this tool three times in one direction, three times in the opposite direction, take a measurement, average all the measurements, and that is our speed. And today they're rolling at about nine and a half, which, it, which for today is, is an average speed for the type of play we have, which is public play on the public course, no tournaments, and just regular member play on the member golf course. You can adjust by the cut of the green, the speed as well, can't you? Correct. We can uh, double cut, double roll, single cut, single roll, do nothing, depending on what type of play we are gonna have that day. Whether we're gonna have the average golfer out here, or whether we're gonna have the avid golfer, or whether we're gonna have a PGA event out here, we can adjust on a moment's notice, nine feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 13 feet. 13 feet is a PGA caliber golf green. I've never had a putt feel so good. Now I'm understanding why. That's what we strive for. I thought the Hills course was beautiful. Here we are on the Lakes course, just as spectacular. Wetlands, lakes on about every hole. We're on 13 of the Lakes course right now. And when a golfer plays the Lakes course, he's gonna encounter water on 13 of the 18 holes. But don't let that intimidate you. If you're an average golfer, we have five sets of tee boxes on every hole that will accommodate every level of player. I thought this was called the Lakes Course. Well, we do have 102 bunkers conveniently, inconveniently located throughout the golf course. Let's see this fine shot you're gonna make here. Oh boy, here we go. Beautiful putt, Mitch. What an absolutely glorious day. I don't know about you, but I'm starving. 
Let's get a bite at David's. I'd love that. What better way to cap off an extraordinary day of golfing than to have lunch at David's? It was a beautiful day, beautiful weather, great course condition. Great and, course condition. Uh, this is a world-class resort. It is. Uh, you know what? And I think you should come back and see some more of it. We have a, a swim and fitness center. We have a event center. We have full-on restaurant that you're seeing some of right now. And some villas. I would love to come back and show some more of the property. We'd love to have you. Let's have some good lunch here. Oh, let's do that. with Red Hawk Golf and Resort. Thanks again for having us out today. You're welcome. And you can find Red Hawk Golf and Resort on the internet at redhawkgolfandresort.com or give them a call at 775-626-6000. Hope you enjoyed the show. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. This face is probably looking awfully familiar, <laughs> but at the same time, Shane Polwart, President and CEO of Microtech Computer Systems and Business IT Services, he's up to big things in our community. So excited to have you back again. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mitch. It's great to be back. This is exciting because you're taking on providing our community with information and resources that they haven't had before in the past. Tell me what's going on. We're starting a podcast June 1st at 9 a.m. Uh, there will be a link on our homepage and we're going to be talking about a lot of the issues that are currently in the media regarding security violations, uh, IT services, uh, HIPAA and, and hackers and, and phishing and, and all sorts of other interesting topics. Well, this is really exciting for our community, Shane, that they have a place where they can access free information about these really important things. And you just started to mention some things that on the surface, people have heard these words before, but you're gonna get into what they really mean. And you talk about hackers. This is a big deal today. Yes. Even people in their personal residences are at risk of, pers of hacking. Absolutely, nobody is without risk but there's things that you can do to protect yourself, and that's what we want to talk about. We want to, we want to talk about these issues in, in, a, in a way that uh, provides the, the listeners with value and a, a place to go to, to read more about it um, and, and various other alternatives, such as a managed IT service provider. Well, and, and that's ultimately you know, where this will cause people to understand their risks that they're taking every day right now that they're completely unaware of. And you mentioned phishing. There's phishing software out there, uh, malware or viruses that uh, people can get on the internet. There are all sorts of things that people can dump into your cache memory. And these are things that you manage when you manage a business's IT services for them, their security, their safety. But these are really big issues. I mean, you, there's so many, you can open up the, the newspaper or the internet every day of the week, and there's another discussion about a hacker that got into some big system and was able to get into their data. And when there's Privacy Act violations, there's HIPAA violations, many of our, our, our audience members right now have received a letter in the mail when one of their uh, or one of the organizations that they support that had their information has been violated and they get a letter about it. But what does that really mean to them? And how do they protect themselves day to day in this world, in this environment? Exactly. That's what we want to talk about. There's a lot of false information out there. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of opinion out there. We want to get down to the actual facts and how it affects users and businesses and, and how they can protect themselves. And what excites me is this is going to be free to the community. They can come in every Wednesday morning starting June 1st at 9 a.m. They can go to your website, log on to your podcast for free. I mean, this is a service you're providing our community. And why, why are you doing that? Because it needs to be done. And there's nobody else out there doing it. Like you said, you can go online and you can see article after article after article. Do you really know what to believe? 
Uh, we want to coalesce the, the data that's out there into something that is actually concise, poignant, and relevant. So people don't have to spend hours searching aimlessly for, for the answers to their questions. I think this is really more important than people are going to understand at the very f moment that they hear about this and why I'm hoping that our entire community will tune into your podcast to start to get an idea of what you're really providing here. But when you talk about breaches to people's personal and or business data, I mean, you're talking about uh, potential litigation. Many of our small business owners in Northern Nevada are sole proprietors, meaning that all of their personal wealth, their house, their cars, their bank accounts are all at risk should they be sued for not having protected their clients from these risks. And on top of the civil action, there's also legal ramifications in terms of government regula regulatory commission coming in uh, for HIPAA violations. There's, there's massive fines could completely knock somebody out of business. Even large corporations that don't have compliant information technology services systems in place. Um, can wind up in litigation that can even exceed their insurance policy face value and take businesses down. And this, this is what we want to prevent, I guess, is why you're doing this podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, that the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, it's really true in this scenario. Uh, it, it, it doesn't take that much to, uh, to set up a, a pr protection for your business or your, or your personal assets. And it just takes doing it and knowing what to do and how to do it. And of course, technology changes all the time. We keep up with technology. That's another aspect of it. We want, we want to share that with the community. So tell us what people can expect on this podcast. Obviously, you're going to educate them on some of the uh, language, lingo, industry language that you're going to break down into lay terms for them. When yes. you talk about phishing and malware, you're going to actually help them understand even what that is. But what other services can they count on uh, receiving on this podcast? We like to talk about where the future is going with technology, uh, cloud services. You know, cloud's a big buzzword out there right now. And and it's, see, for a lot of the customers I've talked to, when I say cloud, they immediately their eyes glaze over. They get scared. <laughs> a wall comes up. And when I explain to them when I say cloud, I really mean internet. And you've been on the internet for 20 years. There's really nothing to be afraid of when it comes to the cloud. Well, it's all a matter of operational security, doing the right things to keep yourself protected. And I think that's really interesting because you bring up a subject right there that many people, you say their eyes glaze over because it's new technology, they have doubts, lack of trust in, they don't understand, and therefore the eyes glaze over. And you're gonna take that on on your podcast. Really, Shane, on behalf of our community, I wanna thank you for being even willing to, to do this, uh, providing this information for free for our community because you care about our community. I hope everybody tunes in, whether you're a small business, a large business, or an individual, I hope you'll tune in every Wednesday at 9 a.m. to Microtech Computer Systems and Business IT Services podcast. That link will be on their website, which is microtechreno.com. If they want to call you and get information about this, or to ask you questions about information and technology services, how can they get a hold of you? Well, you can call us at 775-351-2211 um, or email us at service at microtechreno.com. That's Shane Paul Wirt, President and CEO of Microtech Computer Systems, Business IT Services. Always great to have you on our show. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. This incredible group of individuals with me today are all members of an extraordinary community organization called the Four Kids Foundation. Earl Nielsen, the original founder of the Four Kids Foundation. If you wouldn't mind starting with, what is the Four Kids Foundation? Who do they serve? And why did you form this organization? The Four Kids Foundation is a local nonprofit that was formed to identify and assist uh, children in need uh, when, when they couldn't get services anywhere else. So basically the kids who fall through the cracks. 
And how did that get its start? Uh, you are also a professional in the medical community here. Well, I'm a psychologist in private practice in Reno, and in 2003, uh, Friends of mine, uh, attorneys, uh, judges, businessmen, uh, would often call and ask me if I knew where a child could get a particular service when there was no help for the child. Uh, it wasn't necessarily that they needed psychological help. <laughs> it was whatever they needed. And you know, people would call and say, look, I know this family that is in distress. Uh, it's not part of what I do. Can, do you know anybody who would help? And I would make phone calls and see if I could help. Uh, and finally, one of my friends suggested that we start a, a private nonprofit uh, that would be a funding source for children in need. Um, and, and so the, the, the friend provided the initial funding for the group. I wrote the 501c3 and became the board chair, and I'm still the board chair. And that happened back, I understand, in 2003. Correct. And from there, you brought on your wife, Paula Nielsen, who is yes. currently the executive director. Yes. So let's take a second and chat with Paula. All right. This is Paula Nielsen, the executive director of the Four Kids Foundation, extraordinary part of our community. And you were persuaded to become a part of this organization as executive director by your husband, Earl Nielsen. What is an executive director's responsibilities and what is it that makes this so precious for our community? Well, my job as executive director is just about everything. Um, I do the grant writing, fundraising, case management, um, special events, accounting. Um, so just about anything that there is to do, I do it. Um, the foundation is, is precious in that it provides children who have no other way of obtaining a need um, to, to obtain that need. We provide the funding for any need a child has. Now I'm familiar with what you mean when you say any need, but this is one of the hardest parts of describing the work that 4Kids Foundation does. So do the best you can in explaining what any needs a child may have means that you provide funding for. Well, it is just that, Any. We provide funding for eyeglasses, summer school fees, we do um, medications, we do medical procedures, we provide funding for swimming lessons or computers. Anything that, that will benefit a child, we will pay for as long as there isn't another organization or funding source to pay for it. That's absolutely incredible. I can't wait to introduce some of the board members for the four kids to our community as well. They're a great group. Thank you. This is Steve, Deidre, and Margaret, and I am Mitch. You know that already. And we are all board members for the Four Kids Foundation, all volunteers, not paid uh, for our service for our community of children. A couple of our board members couldn't be here today, and we want to give them a shout out uh, for being a part of this extraordinary organization. And Steve, I'd like to start with you and, and ask you, what is it that caused you to want to get involved with the Four Kids Foundation? And tell us a little about who you are in our community. My name is Steve Harris. I'm a local attorney for over 40 years. This community has given me a lot, and I wanted to give back and my primary focus is to help kids, young people. There's a lot of kids out in our community that have medical issues, dental issues, and we're here to try to satisfy those needs. This is Deidre, and you work professionally with children full time and devote your time to the Four Kids Foundation. Extraordinary, just knowing that. Tell me a little bit about your, what you do and who you are in our community as well. Uh, my name is Deidre Manley, and I work in children's mental health with the state of Nevada and I see children every day that are falling through the cracks um, of different the different systems and families that aren't able to provide certain things for kids and what I love about this foundation is as a board member we meet every two weeks and we review the applications and we make decisions right then um, and we're able to provide things right here to local children that immediately happens, which is pretty unheard of with a nonprofit or, or any kind of foundation or any kind of system for that matter. I completely understand and feel exactly what you're talking about. Uh, what many people might not realize is I too am a board member for the Four Kids Foundation. 
And for me, the reason that I wanted to become involved with this organization is precisely to whom we help. Mm -hmm. It's for kids. What better cause is there in our community? And as Paula said, it's at anything that they need that there isn't other services for. Many organizations are specific to one paradigm or one diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And really the Four Kids Foundation was so broad spectrum that anything a child could need, we could deliver in, as you said, in a timely fashion. I couldn't help but want to be involved with this cause. Uh, I engage our community to be involved with this cause. We need the support of a community to provide for the children of our community. And the money does stay here local. That's why I'm involved with it. So thank you as well. Thank you. Margaret is one of the very early board members with the Four Kids Foundation. And tell me how you got your start when you started becoming actively involved with this foundation. Okay, well 10 years ago, a friend of mine invited me to the Four Kids Foundation wine and cheese party. And when you go to the wine and cheese, you'll see all the stories of the children that have been helped. And it impressed me so much that with a small organization that so many children were helped um, sometimes for big amounts, sometimes for small, but every need is met when it, it meets our requirements. A year later, I went to the Wine and Cheese and offered my services to become a board member. I met with Earl Nielsen, we had lunch, and I've been on the board for nine years now. It's really important to me to help children, and especially in Reno, there are so many children that, whose needs are not met. There are many organizations that do a good job, but when they run out of funds or they've met reach their limit, people can come to us. The children are met with the, the funds from the Four Kids Foundation. And it is very rewarding to see how quickly we respond and how often we respond and how many children we've helped in the nine years I've been involved. One of the things that inspires me that you just brought to my mind is that we really serve a great deal of what we would consider the working poor in our community, really hardworking people that just don't have the resources for this one need that they have. They're really, all they need is that little helping hand. So thank you for your years, thank you. more than a decade of service. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning more about this incredible community organization serving the children of Northern Nevada, the Four Kids Foundation. Margaret was just mentioning this annual wine and cheese party, and that's what's coming up here Friday, June 3rd, right here where we stand at the club at Arrow Creek. And you can get your tickets online at the 4 They're $45 if you buy them in advance, $50 at the door per person. Don't forget to tell all of your friends about this incredible organization and donate generously. Thank you. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.